Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge and welcome back to my channel. A couple of weeks ago, I released a video showing you how to make your own split screen effect in Final Cut Pro. The video got a lot of interest and in the comments, quite a few people asked how to make a split screen preset in motion for use in Final Cut Pro. So today, we'll take a look at how you can make your own 2UP split screen plugin in Apple Motion and publish it as a generator for use in Final Cut Pro. When you first open up Motion 5, you need to select what type of project you want to make and the project properties. For this plugin, let's select Final Cut Generator and in the top right corner, select the video resolution, frame rate and the duration of your project. For this demo, we'll stick with the defaults, but if you want to pick a different project resolution, you follow the same steps and just adjust the numbers based on the resolution you select. Frame rate and project duration don't really matter because once published to Final Cut Pro, these will adjust accordingly. Click Open. The next screen you'll see is a blank project window. First thing I always do when using Motion is set the viewer size to fit the entire frame. This way, I can see my entire image. For this plugin, we'll use drop zones for our clips, so when you use it in Final Cut Pro, you can select any clip you want for this effect. To add a drop zone to your project, at the top of your window, Open the Add Object drop down menu and select Drop Zone. This places a drop zone layer into the default group in the Layers window. To make things easier as you get deeper into the project, it's a good idea to rename these layers and groups so you know exactly what you're dealing with. We'll start off with the left half of the screen, so single click on the text in the first group and simply name it Left Side. Single click on the Drop Zone text under it and name it Left Drop Zone. Well here, let's make another group for the right side of our plugin. Right click on any blank part of the layers window and select new group. Change the name of this group to right side. With the right side group selected, open the add object drop down menu, add another drop zone and rename it right drop zone. We now have two drop zone layers stocked on top of each other. To separate these and make a split screen, we'll use a mask. Select the right drop zone layer and from the Mask Tool drop down menu, select Rectangle Mask. Up in the Viewer window, click and drag out a rectangle. The size and position really don't matter here. With the Mask layer selected, open the Inspector window and select the Properties tab. First, to center your mask in your frame, change the X and the Y position values to 0. This moves your mask to the middle of the frame. Select the Mask tab and at the bottom of the Mask controls, Click the Convert to Points button. Click Convert in the pop-up window. This enables position controls for each individual control point. We'll use these values to split our drop zone layer right down the middle. But before we make any adjustments, let's disable our left side group for now, just so we can see exactly what's going on. All the values for our control points are based around an anchor point, which is exactly in the center of the frame. If we change both values for control point 1 to 0, our control point moves to the exact center of our frame. For this plugin, we want a vertical split screen, so we'll leave the X value at 0, and for the Y value, we want half of our project resolution. Our project is 1080 pixels tall, so half of that is 540. We'll enter that for the Y value. For control point 2, we want it in the top right corner, so enter half of 1920, which is 960 for the X value, and 540 for the Y value. For control point 3, enter 960 for the X value, and since we need it below our anchor point, negative 540 for the Y. And for the last control point, enter 0 for the X value to place it in the middle, and negative 540 for the Y. Our drop zone now takes up exactly half of our screen. Next, we need to repeat these steps for the other side of our split screen. Re-enable the left side group, and to see what you're working with, disable the right side. Select your left drop zone layer and add a rectangle mask. Center your mask in the Properties tab. And once again, convert the mask to control points. Enter the control point values to set your mask to the left side of the screen. Re-enable the right side group. This gives us two drop zone layers in our generator, each one taking up exactly half of our screen. What we need to do next is add some controls to our generator clip so we can adjust the framing of each clip in Final Cut Pro. 
select your right drop zone layer, make sure the image tab is selected in the inspector, and from the two drop down menu, select drop zone. This reveals two more controls in the inspector, pan and scale. Click the disclosure triangle on the right side of the pan controls and select publish. This will publish this control so we can adjust it in Final Cut Pro. Do the same to the scale control. Before we go any further, let's rename these so we know what these controls do in Final Cut Pro. Select the project layer in the layers window, and in the inspector, make sure project is selected. Let's rename the pan control and call it right side position. And the scale control to right side scale. We now need to do the same to the left side. Select the left drop zone layer, click on the two drop down menu, and select drop zone. Publish the pan and scale parameters, select the project layer, and rename these left side position and left side scale. Since we added the left drop zone first, that's a drop zone on top. Click and drag the left side controls and place them under the left drop zone. Before we publish this plugin to Final Cut Pro, let's add a divider between the images and a border around the entire frame. To do this, first, let's make another group and call it border slash divider. Inside this group, add a rectangle by selecting rectangle from the shapes drop down menu. In the viewer, click and drag out a rectangle. Once again, the size and position don't really matter. With the rectangle layer selected, in the inspector, in the properties tab, zero out the position values to place the rectangle in the middle of the frame. Next, in the shapes tab, Select Geometry and click the Convert to Points button. We'll use these point values to make our rectangle fit the entire frame. So for point 1, enter negative 960 for the X value and 540 for the Y. Point 2 will be positive 960 for the X and positive 540 for the Y. For point 3, enter positive 960 for the X and negative 540 for the Y. And for point 4, negative 960 for the X and negative 540 for the Y value. This will make your rectangle exactly the size of your video frame. Go back to the style of your rectangle, deselect the fill check box and select the outline box. Set the width outline for your rectangle to 40 pixels. To add a line dividing your clips, select line from the shapes drop down menu and click and drag out a line in the viewer. In the inspector, change the start and end caps to square and set the width of your line to half of your border width, which in our case is 20 pixels. Select the Properties tab, and move your line to the middle of the frame by zeroing out the X and the Y position values. Go back to the Shape tab, and select Geometry. Set both X values to zero, and set the Y value for point 1 to positive 540, and point 2 to negative 540. This will place your divider line right between your two clips. Our plugin is now ready to be published to Final Cut Pro. From the menu bar, select File and Save As. Give your plugin a name and either select an existing category or make a new one. Let's call ours Split Screens. Click Publish. Our plugin is now ready for use in Final Cut Pro. Open the Titles and Generators browser, select its Split Screen category. And inside here, you'll find your new plugin you just made. Drag and drop the generator clip down into your timeline. To add clips to your drop zones, make sure the generator clip is selected and open the inspector window. Click the first drop zone button, go to your media browser, and select the clip you want to use for this drop zone. Click Apply Clip. You can now use the controls you published earlier to adjust the size and framing of your clip. To add a clip to the other side of your split screen, click the second drop zone button, select your clip you want to use for this drop zone, and click Apply Clip. Adjust the framing and size of this clip by using the Publish controls under the second drop zone. Just like that, you've just made your own basic split screen plugin you can use over and over. A couple more things. First, drop zone behavior in Final Cut Pro can be a little bit confusing at times. Brett Williams from BrettFX.com made a video explaining how to make the most out of drop zones in Final Cut Pro. I'll have it linked in the video description below. Make sure to check it out. It'll answer a lot of the questions you might have about drop zones. Also, even though in this example we just made a simple 2-up split screen, you can follow the same steps to make much more advanced plugins. 
just takes a little bit of time and effort. And last, if you don't have Motion or don't have time to make your own split screen plugin, I'm making a couple of versions of this plugin you'll be able to download and use. A light version will have a number of basic presets and you can download it for free from my website. I'm also currently building a full version of this plugin with more presets and many more controls to customize it. The full version will be available for free to all my patrons, so if you support me on Patreon, I'll be releasing it as soon as it's complete. If you're not a patron, I encourage you to visit my Patreon page, linked in the description, where for as little as $1 per month, you'll get full access to this plugin and many more to come in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next week. Thank you.